plcfiddle.com is a website where you can write ladder logic. And we're going to go ahead and do a quick overview of that. So when you first load up plcfiddle.com, you come to the website that you see on my screen or on the screen in front of you. Well, there's kind of three main sections of this website. We have the PLC code itself, which is located right there. We have all of our input, outputs, timers, counters, etc. located on the left. And then you have your kind of input configuration screen where you can add contacts, things like that across the top. Now, when you first start off, we already have some code written here. So this is your standard latching circuit. I would say that the stop button is backwards because the, the button in real life would be normally closed, not in the software. But we can't make a normally closed button. I mean, you could leave it on, but keep students that gets you know everyone's minds backwards so that causes some problems but you'll have to learn to deal with that problem anyway so this code that's written as you can see when I press the start button the motor go ahead and does turn on and this is referencing the motor output right there and when I hit this release the start button the motor does stay on because of the code we can go through the motor contacts up and then through just like that all right now, um, when I press the stop button, power stops flowing, all right? And as long as that stop button is pressed, pressing the start button doesn't do anything. So um, as long as the stop button's not pressed, we can start the system back up. And the other thing is, though, the PLC fiddle, you can't do this in the real world, is you can actually trigger the output itself. And because of the code written, it will stay triggered. If I actually have the stop button pressed when I trigger that. It turns on for a brief second, enough for the program to run through the code and go, nope, it's not on, and it turns right back off. So, kind of a fun fact there. Now that is annoying because in the real world we can't trigger those by themselves. Now we have two different types of contacts that we'll be using, and there's a third type available. So we have a make contact, as I call it, which is in the software that would be normally open. We have a break, as I'm calling it, which in the software would be normally closed. All right, and then over here we have what's called a rising edge detection. So if you wanted to use that, you can. I'm not going to talk about that. Um, we're not going to deal with it today, but I wanted to point it out to you. So you do have a rising edge detection option there. Now remember, I don't like calling the, the software makes and breaks normally open, normally closed, because I like to be able to keep my normally open, normally closed reference to the actual real world interface. And then I like to use make and break for in the software. So just a quick little reminder. Now, if we go across the top, so those are all of our inputs or our contacts. Then we go to our coils. We have our standard contact output. All right, that's the one that we'll be using. We do have a latch contact and an unlatch contact as well, which you're welcome to use if you want to. But for our assignments for right now, those are not what I want you guys to be using. I really want you to be using the normal contact. We do have a math tab where we can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and we can also move variables around. We do have a comparison tab for less than, greater than, or greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, equal to, and not equal to. We have a timer and a counter. So we have our three different types of timers here. We have our on delay, our off delay, and our retentive. Then we also have two different types of counters, a count up and a count down. And then you do also have a reset option there for your counters. All right. Again, we're not going to get into those too much um, right now, but just wanted to point them out. If we go to the other tab, here's how you can add more rungs. So obviously your code's probably going to be more than one rung of code, so you can add a whole bunch of rungs by using that button. Um, if you want to do something in parallel, so we more of an OR statement, that would be this symbol right here. We can drag that in. Um, we'll come back and do that in a minute. And then the last thing I want to point out here is the trash. So if you want to delete something, you can delete it one icon at a time by grabbing that one icon and dragging it to the trash bin. Or you can delete the entire rung at a time by dragging that rung to the trash bin. So something to think about. Now, if we have a contact that's in use, like this is the start button again, should have done this a minute ago, you can't delete it. So normally you would click on these X's over here to delete an input or an output or a contact or whatever it is over there. But with, with it being used in your code, you are unable to delete it. All right. 
So first we have to delete that item, so we can drag that to the trash, and now once we do that, now we're able to delete things. So I'm going to go ahead and just create some inputs. Input B, input C, input D, output A, and output B. There we go. Just wanted to create a whole bunch. Now if you needed some sort of different input, right here there is a little drop down option. For what we're doing in the beginning of the semester, the Boolean logic is all you will need. However, if we do drop this, you can see we have Boolean, we have numbers for our math and analog related stuff, we have timers, and we have counters. Um, I might as well make a timer just to show you guys, and we're just going to throw that in there. Notice with the timer one, and the counter does it too, there's a little drop down arrow here. Instead of being on or off, we have a little drop down arrow. And that shows us all of the other um, yeah, tags that are associated with our timer tag. So in this case we have an enable timer timing, a qubit or a done bit um, accumulated, and a preset. Counter is obviously going to be a little bit different, but this basically when you create a timer or a counter there's other tags that it creates with the timer or counter tag. So saves you from having to go through and manually create everything, which saves you a lot of time. However for today we don't need that one at all. So First, let's go ahead and just make a quick AND, so we can do a variable and another variable equals an output. And you can see that little blue dotted box appear. When I drop this variable, it's going to go into that blue dotted box. So if I go between them, which I can't do, um, if I go on top of one, it puts it to the left. All right, left. Notice to go to the right, there is a little itty bitty blue box down there. It will let me put it to the right, but it has to think about it. It will always put the outputs on the far right and the inputs on the far left, which is kind of convenient. So let's go ahead, we can use the drop down to select the variables that we've already created. And this is a simple AND. So we can say if A and B, turn output A on. If not, otherwise doesn't turn it on. Now, if you want to do an OR statement, you have to come to the other tab. And again, that is this wonderful little symbol right here. It's called a branch. We can drag that down into our code. Notice how the bottom of the, the branch symbol is what I'm dragging, not the top. All right, make sure so you get that in the blue dotted box. We can then go back to contacts. We can put, again, we can throw those in there. Throw a coil at the end. Come on, coil at the end. Boom. Now we can say if C or D, output B. So again, I can say now if I do C, output B turns on. Oh, let me go ahead and quick. So you can see if I turn C off, it's off. D on, it's on, D off, it's off. So we can do that. So just a kind of a quick little introduction. Ah, last step. The save button right here. When you press the save button, you will get a little pop-up window. In Firefox, it's in the middle of the screen. and Chrome, it's more kind of up the top here. But anyway, you have this URL here. So if I highlight that, I can copy that and paste it. And I will always come back to this. So let me go ahead and do that. You get a new tab. So if I paste that there, it will take me back to that same exact code that I did have written before. Now, every time you press that save button, you'll notice that the very end of this part highlighted in pink there changes. So now it's the last two are six four. This time they're FB. This time they're eight D. So you can see every time you press that, it does change. Now, this URL is also at the top. All right, it's also changing up there when I press save. So if I go ahead and press it again, it says A8. Notice up here it says A8, so they do match. All right, and again, every time I save it, D0, D0. All right, that's my quick introduction to PLC Fiddle.